Several student athletes put their pens to paper as National Signing Day hits home in a big way here in Henrico. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catter. <laughs> National Signing Day has been for many years celebrated throughout the country. In the last couple of years, early signing day may have taken away some of the luster for sure since athletes could sign back in December. Still, it's personal for these young men and women who put in the work in and out of the classroom for this one culminating moment. For many, it's a moment where they realize everything they sacrificed and those who helped along the way got them to this very point. After all, we see most of them on Friday night, but not at practice, not in the halls at school, not making tough decisions in the community. That's why this day is always so special. We start things off at Highland Springs High School defending state champs. This class went a combined record of 38-5 for their career. That included a COVID year. 16 signees, four signed early, including Takai Heath, Darius Taylor, and Braylon Johnson, all going to Virginia Tech. Miles Green signed with UVA, Lance Nelson Jr., Emmanuel Scott, Jaden Taylor, Alim and Aziz Foster Pal, just to name a few. Karan Ferguson, Ian Wynn. The list goes on and on. An emotional morning. This turns out to be the second largest Springer signing day as they put their pens to the paper and make their dreams a reality. Congratulations, the Highland Springs football team signing and moving on to the next level. Long days, summer practice, you know, and a lot of us, we all grew up with each other, so we've all been dreaming about times like this since we were young, so this is a dream come true for sure. Words can't even explain. They can't explain. They've been there for me since day one. None of this would be possible without them. I've been through a lot, man. It was very, very emotional this uh, this morning. I mean, I've been I've been playing with them forever. Can't lie. So it was very emotional. But we went through COVID, COVID twice, and we finally got it. We went 15 and 0 this year. It's a great environment to see them success. I mean, like sacrifice everything for us. Like sometimes, I, I know I'm not supposed to speak of this. But sometimes the coaches come to the jobs before they go and spend time with their wife. Just the just the sacrifice. That's a sacrifice for us. So if we didn't like practice Saturday, so say we practice Saturday, they'll come over there, they'll come to practice, they'll sacrifice and spend time with their wife. So that's like a great opportunity. And I could not have nothing better than that. And just down the road, we go to Verina High School, where Kenny Faison and Ben Blakely both signed with Virginia State. Ben Blakely, a kicker who hurt his hamstring, didn't even play last year, still inks his national letter of intent. Anthony Green Jr. going to UVA Rotwise. Jillian Sisk, see your mom there? She used to run with her. She'll sign with VMI on a cross-country slash track scholarship. Kavion Keys, big name, once was committed to North Carolina. He flipped signs with Penn State. Marquise Vincent heads to Furman. And now the moment they've all been waiting for, signing their national letters of intent. Congratulations to these six from Verizon. I would say, like I said, the atmosphere of it. You know, I've been down there three times. Uh, my first time was in the summer uh, when I was committed to North Carolina, uh, actually. Uh, but when I stepped on the field, it just felt like home for me. But like, you know, I could see myself playing. Um, you know, it was it was an amazing feeling. Um, like I said, you know, the coaches wanted me there from day one. You know, when they came in here, Coach Franklin came in here day one and offered me. Um, so, it, you know, it was a mutual feeling on both sides. I've been waiting for this. As soon as I had my visit there, I knew that I wanted to go to VMI and I could not wait to make it official to go there. Just putting on that purple, you know, that's that's my biggest thing. Um, getting on that field, do what I know to do. You know, represent 804 well, represent my parents well. And um, that's, that's my main focus and what I can't wait. And we'll have more from signing day on the next edition of Sportswire, including festivities from Glenn Allen. 
Well, before several stars were signing at Highland Springs and Verina, some of these guys had work to do on the basketball court. It was Springers vs. Blue Devils Part 2, this time at Highland Springs. In the first meeting, K.J. Weiss was dominant against the Springers in a Verina victory, so in round two, the Springers would do everything in their power to make somebody else beat them. And this time, Highland Springs is playing at home. So back we go to Highland Springs, and these two players, Miles Derricott, K.J. Weiss, would have a lot to do with the outcome in this one. We said Highland Springs would have to eliminate Weiss as much as possible or contain him. Denzel Coles is good at that. But early on, Verina scoring with the defense. Extra pass to the aforementioned QB1, Miles Derricott. Long three ball, nothing but nylon. You want more Derricott? You got him. How about the other corner? He was on fire in the first. Six quick ones for Derricott. More defense for Verina. K.J. Weish. They had a good defensive game plan against him, but you can't stop him in transition. Two points for Weish. Big lead early for Verina. But Highland Springs comes fighting back. James Vaughn for two, counted and one. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. Denzel Coles, he got stripped. Derricott to the rack. Somehow he finishes. Two more for Miles, who stepped up huge in this one. Cole. Not phased, not by a long shot. Knocks that one down. Coles was tremendous, as he usually is, filling up the stat sheet with points. But you can't keep a great player down for Verina Long. K.J. Weish comes right back with a three. Close game after one, 15-13. Verina led by nearly 10 in the opening stanza. Coles comes back, ties it right up. Verina. Where's the ball? There it is, off the iron, no. Second chance, oh no, he's open. Cans the three ball, does Weish. KJ, still putting up figures. KJ, having to give up the rock. Derricott says, I gotcha. Connects for three. Derricott and Weish combined for 45 points in this one. Springers, no quit. Jordan, Axon Jackson, he had a strong game down low. That's good, 30 to 27. It's anybody's ball game at the half. Second half, one quarterback. Okay, Derek, you can do your thing. How about Kmart down low for two for Highland Springs. Switching sides though, of course. Back comes Derek, the quarterbacks having a field day. Oh, look at that move. He took like seven or eight steps. AD, Harry Lee Daniels says, that's not a travel. Come on, man. You just saw it here on sports where he took like eight steps. Still a brilliant move. Uh, by Christian Martin, but of course that's not going to count. Not even in a Euro step uh, NBA world. Good for Coles. Highland Springs still in this one, but there was an answer by Verina in every step, and it often came with Miles. Miles Derricott, 25 points in this one, and KJ Weiss, the steal, the scoop, the score. Even though they had a good game plan to stop him offensively, he still filled up buckets with 20. Cole trying to find. Highland Springs back. Instead, it's the outlet pass. Weiss connecting. He throws a touchdown strike to Derricott. Derricott in the receiving end, and then again in transition. Here comes Verina again. This time it's Deion Jones. He connects for two. And the Verina fans and faithful and team all loving this one. Because they take control in the fourth quarter when it matters most. And the Blue Devils get the win on the road, 65-56. Uh, man, our, we, we got one of the best point guards in the state, in my opinion. So every team is going to focus on KJ. So I just wanted to take the load off of tonight and just do it, do what I had to do. The coaches told me I got I to gotta go do what I got to do, and that's what I did. We got the dub. That's all, I, that, that's all that matters to me. We have plenty of hoops action still to come when we return. Godwin and Freeman renew their acquaintances when the West End rivals battle to the end. Plus, the Glen Allen ladies get a tough test at Henrico. Could the Jags remain unbeaten? Highlights are straight ahead. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod-like of you. 
Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Sportswire Camo Night at Douglas Freeman for one of the great West End rivalries. It is Freeman playing host to Mills Godwin. Freeman always tough, especially at home. P.J. Moore, you want more? We got more. Freeman up on early lead against the Eagles soaring. As a matter of fact, the Mavs go to Jackson Cunningham. The senior connects for two and an early 7-2 lead. Godwin not deterred, not in the slightest. Number 53, Daniel K connects. 7-4, the score after one. Not a lot of scoring in the first quarter. So about defense until, oh, we're raining threes. Hallelujah. Marshall, dip. Dips that one in, 4-3. Keo comes right back and scores. Get two and one. Another old-fashioned three-point play. Eagles. Game of runs, as these rivalry games usually are. Great pass underneath. Finds Philip Seidenberg. He connects for two down low. And then the sign of good coaching is a great inbounds play. Three ball, nothing but nylon. And Logan Rhodes, less traveled, has taken Godwin in command, 21-16. Five-point lead, but they were down early in this. So it was a big change. Daniel Kale again connects down low for two in transition. Godwin will throw a variety of defenses at you, but Freeman can flat out shoot. That three ball, nothing but nylon money, and the, the fans in camo are loving it. Four-point game, you want more? You got more from Marshall Dip. Dip had himself a huge night. That's just a dip in the ocean from way beyond the arc. How about more dip? Oh, my! Marshall dips it in once again for three. That's why he wears the three on his jersey. They can get hot. Game of runs, as I said. Well, Freeman was on one. That time, Connor Hillam connects for two and one. 37-34 now. Freeman in front. Could Godwin stage a comeback? Yes. They can, especially when Logan Rhodes is shooting the basketball. Good for three there. Four from the Eagles, cut to the basket with reckless abandonment. Well done by Kress Suber. 43-42, Goblin, a minute 39 to go. Each possession so important at this juncture, at this point. And oh, rewarding the great passing and the corner three ball, nothing but nylon for Meyer Kaplan. And Godwin would have a four-point lead late, get a big-time rebound, and they would hold off Douglas Freeman as they go coast to coast. Godwin takes it from Freeman, 49-48 the final. Meanwhile, at Henrico, we have a good one. Undefeated Glenn Allen on the road on a Monday night affair against Henrico. Glenn Allen. Very, very generous sharing the basketball, moving the rock around. And they have a variety of girls who can fill up the score sheet, number 20 being one of them, Lindsay Shoulders. Later in the first, again, good ball movement, paying dividends. This time, it's Shoulders again from the long range. Henrico had answers themselves, not good there. And instead, on this possession, you're going to see another score from the Jags, and that's Sydney Warsham. She led all scores with Glen Allen. Jags out to a nice start, but you really got to guard this young lady because she can light it up from everywhere. Sinead Moore. You want more? We've got more. Sinead Moore led all scores with Henrico. Still in the first. Ava Johnson. Swish. Pretty, pretty jumper is good. Warriors on the comeback trail, maybe. No. Sierra McGinley. Steal it, score it. Two more for the Jags. Looks like it's going to be blowout city. But Enrico, as I said, they did have answers. Strong drive to the lane by Mackenzie Wiggins. They need more of that. Jags, meanwhile, in transition. She lost the rock. Did Worsham. And this time we're going the other way, and that'll be good for two. So that's a four-point swing. Shayla Wyatt, and it's only 18-14 after one. High-paced first quarter, second quarter, great passing, and a great answer. Wide open shot, cans it. 
And Glenn Allen will hit most of them. Sierra McGinley especially. McGinley had 13 points in the game. Back comes Henrico, though. Mackenzie Wiggins, three of her 10 from way beyond the arc. And then Sierra McGinley says, I'll see your three. I'll raise you another one. McGinley had 13 on the night. Still in the first half. Check this out. Steal score for Alicia Powers. Matter of fact, keep your eye on Powers. She's not finished. But this is how this game would go. We're going to get another steal by Alicia Powers up for the layup. No, it's blocked away. Sydney Worsham wouldn't give up and wouldn't give up two steals and scores twice in a row, would she? So uh, interesting series of events right there. Glenn Allen countering down low. They connect with Sarah Fellin. And then check out the work on the offensive glass. A lot of misses, but hard work, determination, getting to the basketball, getting to the rebounds. Proofs fortuitous. Shayla Wyatt for two. Wyatt played great in this one as well. Glenn Allen, though, answers on the defensive end. And once again, it's Sydney Worsham. 19 points to lead all scores. Worsham was phenomenal. The extra pass, scoop it, score it, yeah. McGinley, two of her 13, done the hard way. But Henrico answers with the three ball, and who else but Sine Moore. And then at the buzzer at the half, Moore gets that one to go. And Henrico, the Lady Warriors, were down double digits, only down six at the half. Second half, though. Glenn Allen turns up the pressure. Sydney Worsham time. Three ball, corner pocket, got it. More from Glenn Allen. This time, Johnson picking, prodding, looking, looking. And they'll wait for their shot patiently. There's no shot clock. Sydney Worsham again. Worsham takes over in the second half, mostly in the third quarter. And then the extra pass, once again, paying off as shoulders, two of her nine points on the evening. All Glenn Allen in the third and in the fourth. That bucket will count as well. Jags win this one. It was tough, 63-53. We hit the mats for a little wrestling action when we come back. Highland Springs grapples with Hermitage while Godwin tries to derail Dinwiddie. Plus, the Lady Eagles fly into Freeman, hoping for a win in ladies' hoops. That's next. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to Sportswear. How about a little wrestling? Home of the Hermitage Panthers. Jack Cut, senior night for him. Congratulations. Hermitage taking on Highland Springs. Quad meet. Godwin also on the other mat taking on Dinwiddie. And we start at weight class 138. It's Ramya Jones versus Edward Shelton. And Shelton has Jones in serious trouble. Shelton with the pin and Highland Springs. You get the win by decision, that's three points. Or by outscoring your opponent, you get the win by fall or pin. That's six points, so six nothing decision there. Later, 150. James Tinsley against Camille Fountain. Camille Fountain was uh, on the receiving end. Almost getting a pin right here is Hermitage with Tinsley. Did very well in this particular match, trying to get Hermitage back in it. There's two more points for a near fall. He wins by major decision, 17 to three. Moving on to weight class 157. John Lipscomb of Hermitage, Javion, or Javon, Reed of Highland Springs. And look at this, almost a reversal for points for Hermitage, turns into a reversal for Highland Springs and Reed. And now Reed 
has John Lipscomb in a serious predicament, looking for the pin, and he gets it. Six more points for Highland Springs. So at 157, Reed with the winner. On to the senior, Jack Cuts in a battle with Diego Enriquez. This was a close match early, but then Enriquez started to dominate later. And he's got Cuts in trouble, and he gets the pin. Nicely done by Diego Enriquez. Winner by fall. Six more points for the Springers. Highland Springs up a lot to a little. 175. Matthew Bigby versus, you can't do that, Lance Nelson Jr. Did you see the trip and the pin? Almost instantly, less than a minute into the match, Lance Nelson Jr. not only signs, he also gets a pin in the same week. He might be Sportswire Athlete of the Week in this particular show. How about the big boys? 285, Ahmad given. Ahmad take it away, but it's Dominic Washington who's going to give the Springers more points in this one as he's got given in trouble and gets the pin. Washington strong in this one. Highland Springs wins it 62-10. On to Godwin and Dinwiddie. We start this one out at 138. Two points for Mr. Cam Myers, taking on Caden Vandermark. Tobin Zebley and Joshua Zebley got Godwin off to a good start at weight class 106 and 113. Looking to continue their winning ways by Myers. Myers has Vandermark in a predicament here, and he gets the fall. I still continue to call it a pin. Gets the pin, Godwin gets the points, and they have the lead over Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie was tough, though. 157, Christian Drumgool versus Colin Mayhew. And Mayhew in trouble, because two points for the takedown there by Drumgool. Good wrestling match here at 157. Because Drumgool will eventually escape to get some points. Trying like heck to get out of there. Gotta stand up. That's what they say. Tough when that leg is pinned, right? Somehow gets away, so that's one point for an escape. But overall, in the end, as the time would run out on Mayhew, he would lose the decision five to two. Got two points for two escapes. Otherwise, this was Dinwiddie's match as Christian Drumgool takes it down at weight class 157. Finally, weight class 165. A good one, Ashton Tavener for Dinwiddie taking on Connor Harrington of Mills Godwin. Tavener gets a two point takedown for the early lead. So points on the board for him. Godwin trying to come back. And this one would be, yeah, there's that one point escape. Sometimes you give it to your opponent just so you can get back into it. Either way, the decision went uh, Dinwiddie's way. Moving on. We go to weight class 175, Divine James versus Marley Raybold. And James in control for Dinwiddie. James looking to get the pin. He's going to get points for the predicament for sure, as Raybold trying to escape. Yep, two and two. Godwin had a great match. Dinwiddie, a great team. This would go to James in the end with a major decision of eight to two. Tied 36 all. Guess what? Dinwiddie wanted a tiebreaker. Well, let's go back to basketball. You saw the animation. It's Godwin, it's Freeman, it's ladies hoops. First quarter action, Godwin with the early lead and patient offensively, and they can be in a matchup zone. Great pass and a cut underneath. Number 22 getting it done. Mia Fairman, more than fair, scores two for Mills Godwin. And then the outlet pass in transition. Lays it up and in, contested shot, but Reagan Niemeyer knocks it down for the junior. Two points for her. Here comes Freeman on the comeback trail. 
Addy, Morton, only a freshman. She's gonna be good already, but just a freshman and tall. So we'll see. Waiting moments, three ball, got it to go, Ella Davis. She's got Ella Davis eyes, 21-19, Godwin over Freeman at the half. Switching sides, Mavs. Long range, three, bullseye. It's Davis again. She can really shoot the rock, can't she? Freeman would take the lead in the second half. Godwin had answers. Number 33, Maggie Hyatt connects down low. The senior, solid for the Eagles. An even better softball player. Three ball, corner pocket, yes. That is Kylie Carroll. She's also been solid for this team. Carroll trying to pass down low. This time, Freeman, Johnny on the spot. They're all over it to Ella Davis. Davis for two. Good one going late, but Godwin went on the run of a lifetime in the fourth quarter. It's only a four-point game going to the fourth. Imagine that. Wait till you see the final. Lakeland Bostain for two down low. Freeman loses that one. Godwin all over it. And here they come in transition. All the way to Hyatt. Lays it up and in. Two points by playing good D. Then on the inbounds, three ball, too much space. I mean, Kylie Carroll's going to nail that all day. You give her that much room. More for Godwin, again in transition. Wide open look, and she cans it. Katie Honaker. Godwin, still on the move. Way to defend without fouling. And then transition offense was their friend in this one. They win this one going away. 50 to 32, the final. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter and watch us on YouTube. I can't wait to see you next time on Sportswire.